Hey, all you pond people, it's Brian here at Team Aquascape. We have another crazy week. I mean, I've said this a lot, but this weekend seems exceptionally crazy. We have so much going on. We have the big Tanner reveal, and I'll tell you what, guys, it's a must walk because the things that those guys had to deal with to build that pond, the rain, the rain, I think a lot more rain and rain and rain, and the way it turned out the end is just so incredible. I was actually genuinely jealous I couldn't be there on that one because it looked so amazing. We're still plugging away out here at the Naperville Project. We are getting close and closer. Unfortunately, we actually have to pull off. Uh, we're working on another project out here in St. Charles and our Naperville customer said, yeah, go ahead and go do that. So nice of him to let us do this because we're building a pond for a wedding ceremony. Kind of cool. Whole story about that next week. But we're out here working on this right now. We have our pond tour set up and all the stuff that goes into the pond tours. We also have Brad, our facilities manager back at Aqualand, setting up a underwater camera in our recreational pond back there. That that's gonna be so cool because you guys will actually be able to link up to that and see what's going on in our rec pond with all of those coastai. Remember that at one point, I think we had a thousand fish back there. So we've got an underwater camera being installed. You'll get to see that done. We've got our pond tours. Yeah, busy, 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 busy week. Here we go. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. It is that time. We are back out here at Tanner Serpa's out here just outside Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and we are here to finish his recreation style pond as part of the regional event that we're hosting here as part of an Aquascape regional event. So we've got the, all the contractors are now here. Today is go time. We have two days to finish this project. We're pretty confident. We have a great group and we are ready to roll. Let's do it. So what we're doing here is we're leveling out the footer for the pump vault. Pump vault has to be the deepest point of the intake bay. Make sure we get all the water we can flow through the system. We dig the hole and if we need to bring it up a little bit, we throw some of this gravel chip on top of the liner and we're good to go. guys just finished up with kathy they love the idea of this one we've got a waterfall that's gonna go in between this tree and this tree right about there we've got a biofall 6000 we'll drop it down to like an 18 you know 20 inch height or something it's gonna drop into a shallow little pool and then twist and meander down almost to about where that downspout's at so we got 31 feet from there to there the biggest thing they love of course is the idea of a bridge so we're gonna redo this pathway right at about this tree start twisting Twisting it that way to a bridge that goes to a little eight by eight foot area over on that side. Just a little spot where they can sit, get the bridge in, etc. etc. So let's start with this pond tour thing. What the heck is a pond tour? Well, we've been doing pond tours for well, as long as I've been part of Aquascape, so 28 years. In fact, I think they've been doing pond tours for 30 years because I believe my parents went on one of Aquascape's original pond tours and it was part of the inspiration on some of the design for the very first pond I ever built. So pond tour. 
doors. It's really just our past customers opening up their backyard, allowing people to come experience the aquascape lifestyle. I like the pond tours for so many reasons. I like going back to see our past customers. I love to see how they've decorated their ponds because the one thing all pond people have in common, they love the outdoors. So they dump a lot of time, a lot of energy into decorating their pond and their entire backyard. So you see incredible outdoor kitchens, outdoor living spaces, pergolas, gazebos, pavilions, dry stream beds, different types of furniture, different types of bird houses, bird feeders, plants in full shade, plants in full suns. Like it's just an awesome, awesome way to generate tons and tons of ideas. Logistically, it's a lot of work for us, right? We have over 20 pounds on the tour this year. We have to coordinate with everybody. We have to get signs out to every house. We have to set up tents at some of the houses. My house is on a nighttime tour, which means I have to get to make sure all my lights are up and working. We have food and beverages and all that kind of stuff being served, bartenders, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a lot of work, but it's so worth it. For us, it's the best way to actually show people what the Aquascape lifestyle is all about. You can show pictures, you can show videos, but actually touching and seeing the fish in person, hearing the birds, looking at the different plants is such a different experience. Now I think we'll actually take it over to Haley and let her talk a little bit more about the logistics. Haley, what you got? Brian wanted me to tell you about our upcoming on tour. So that is this year. We pushed it back a little, so it's towards the end of September, whereas previous years it used to be August. So that is Saturday, September 23rd from 11 to 5, and Sunday, September 24th from 10 to 4. So that is, like all the years in past, a self-guided tour. You guys just need to purchase a ticket to get access to the map locations, and you can go as you please to each stop. We did decide to kind of make it a little bit more streamlined of a route from Bartlett to Downers Grove. So we have four in Bartlett, one in Carroll Stream, one in West Chicago, and one in Wheaton. Two in Naperville, one in Lyle. Five in Downers Grove, including Brian's house. And then two more in Darien and two in Bolingbrook for 19 stops total. So your ticket is good for either day, but we do have something extra special this year, which is what we're calling the Pontour Fiesta. So that is a party at Brian's house in Downers Grove part of why we decided to do that was we have these pond tours every year but we never get the chance to show the nighttime perspective how awesome it looks at night so brian said we're gonna push it back this year we're gonna have a party at my house in the evening so people can enjoy what it is to have a pond at night and not just during the day so the fiesta is on that saturday the 23rd from six to nine there is food and drink included in your ticket you get to hang out with brian and get those all awesome nighttime views that he's always talking about. You guys can check out the link in the description to get your tickets for both the Pond Tour and the Pond Tour Fiesta. Hope to see you there. Hey, really quick, let's just go check in with Brad. Hey guys, Brad here with Team Aquascape. What we're doing today is we're actually gonna be creating a conduit to allow us to feed an underground camera the lines for that back into our building so that way we have the Wi-Fi. So Greg, sitting in Utah, can stream his live fish and you guys may be able to do the same in your future. Follow us along the journey. Aquascape event without a little bit of mother nature putting her fingerprints all over this project. <laughs> Why is everybody running that way? Oh man, so yeah, we looked at the radar, got a little bit of rain heading our way. No big deal, no big deal at all, right? Tim's dry, so it's good. I'm fine, I don't know why. <laughs> all good, so we'll be back after the short network break. Well, 
We got a little bit of rain last night and yesterday to kind of finish out the day. Here is the, the road in. We're just getting here. This is the start of the last day out here on the project. So we've got a little bit of hydrostatic pressure building up underneath the liner down there. You've got to see the fabric, but it's really only because we don't have any water in it. We have water trucks coming this morning. Tim Wood is over in the skidster, kind of pulling out a lot of this dirt. We're going to work on getting this all graded out. We got our overlap in last night for this next cooling area. Once we get that next waterfall done, then we're going to dig that wetland and it's go time. Tanner, how do you feel? Good. Feel good? Good, yeah. I was stressing yesterday, like when we were pulling that out of the woods and getting everything together, but I'm very pleased with the progress and I think it's going to be an exceptional feature. Yeah, we got the pond all the way done. We've got a few edges left to do. The intake area over behind Sean underneath that tripod is set up. We've got basically that whole retaining wall done over there. You can see that massive oak log that's probably, what Trevor, like 17, 18 feet long over there? At least, yeah. It looks awesome. Yeah. We counted the ring and I would imagine that it's probably around 90 years old or it was before it fell. That's an old tree. That's awesome. And that's actually part of that tree. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try and put the whole tree in here. We're going to go <laughs> find the rest of the branches, which actually I think are right there in a the pile behind. Yeah, there's a little bit more right there. There's a little bit more right there, right there. So obviously the wood elements lend such a natural characteristic to the water features. And as you guys have seen, Tanner is, that's really falls right in line with his motif and the things that he's doing. So pretty, pretty cool. But we got to move some dirt and then get that pooling area and then we'll get that waterfall done and then dig that wetland. So a lot of work ahead today and we have more rain in the forecast, unfortunately. So we're going to get cruising. We'll be back. Hey guys, Brad here with the Aquascape. I have Levi helping me today. We are getting ready to pull the wire that we bummed in yesterday for our underwater camera. We're all set. We've got it taped up and we are getting ready to go. It is so humid and it's only 81 degrees. I can't take this. I need to work in Alaska or something. This is too hot. final stretch here now. We're finally starting to do the waterfalls, which is typically the most exciting part of it all. We got those last few rocks that we've been saving the whole time for this, so it's gonna be really cool to see them where they're supposed to go, and just a matter of getting these final details. The only issue now is that just access to everything's cut off, so getting a little tedious. We'll do it though. I mean, how cool is this? Eat lunch with this incredible spread of food, some incredible peoples, and with the bonus of Hanmonium back behind us. Pretty awesome. Come here, Pug, guys. Yeah, dude. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Balance were sent out, and 100% unanimously, you deserve this, and it goes to. Bill Seeds. Also 
happens to be the last rock. So right now what we're doing is we're gonna flip this thing over, get it set, and it's actually gonna anchor our retaining wall. And we're basically done, minus obviously the cleanup and that kind of stuff. The rain was such a huge hindrance and setback, but we still managed to overcome it. Still had a lot of people left for the event for online pandemonium. We got water running. I can't wait for you guys to see it. We're almost there. So I just want to say like thanks everybody for coming out for all the accommodations and everything I appreciate all the effort and hard work that went into it I know that there was a lot of special care going on to the details which obviously I appreciate as a detailed oriented person myself and I mean it's not on Alyssa will attest to it's not uncommon for me to put like 18 hours in every day to what I do so like I'm a very hard worker and like seeing you guys work and stuff like from one person like that to another it's a certain type of breed of person that's always just like going 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 I mean Tim was going while we're all eating so so seven years ago when I started YouTube, I would have never thought I would end up somewhere like this. And I feel like the luckiest guy in the world. So I just want to thank you all so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Holy smokes, what an incredible week. Well, actually technically two weeks that we were out here, but we finally wrapped things up. Water is blowing if you can't hear it already. And it just turned out incredible. We had a lot of challenges on this project. One, it was split up into a couple of trips between Ed, Trevor, and myself, along with Tim and Tanner on the prep week. And then when we came back, we had a little bit of rework left to do. Here's Tanner himself. Yo. Tanner, I mean, while you're right here and, we, and I've got you captive, right? Cause you're, yeah. you're buzzing around. Yeah. I was just beginning to talk about some of those site challenges and yeah. some of the, the logistical things that we did. We moved probably three, 400 yards of soil just to cut in pathways. We had wow. rainwater mitigation yeah. that got underneath the liner. We had kind of bottlenecks at multiple points on the project, which you saw, it's just a lot of things happening. Uh, do you feel a little bit better now that the water is running and everything's kind of finished? I am glad to see it running and everything, but it's cool that kind of maybe some an aspect of all this that people don't think about is the way that the hill was graded wasn't conducive to the property or anything like that. So not only did we build an awesome feature, but it also will help preserve my home and just make it a more usable space overall. Yeah, and I mean, it gives you obviously the sights, the sounds, now living the aquascape lifestyle again, but on a much more grandiose scale. Yeah. And, then, and then what sounds like a home that you and your wife, sounds like a forever home. At yeah, least we for, don't want to move. Right, I mean, why would you, right? After mm -hmm. a creation like this. It's incredible looking. I love the yeah, moss, the wood elements, which we'll see as we walk down through the feature, but it just turned out incredible. But I love this really natural, 
natural rapids, kind of flowing ecosystem, riverine system. Yeah. I knew it was very close to your aesthetic and what you were looking to see. So yeah, I mean, whenever I spoke with that about all of this, I had a very specific in mind as far as the waterfalls go. Not only from a sound perspective, I prefer more higher pitch waterfall as opposed to the really gurgly, babbling brook type of feel. And if you go to a lot of the areas around Western Pennsylvania, around my area, you're gonna see waterfalls that look like this. It didn't have to look exactly like those sure. type of waterfalls, but I wanted something reminiscent of what you'd actually see around here. And all of the stones are locally sourced from Pennsylvania. All the wood, obviously, we pulled from my property and everything. So yeah, I, I'll have plants and different things like that that aren't native to the area. But I think trying to keep as close to the root of Pennsylvania was something really cool that not only did I want to do, but we did it. Well, and I, and I think it's I think it's that home environment that really inspired you to do what you do. Yeah. Right. So I think that was important to us. And I think what was so neat is that because you're so artistic, talented, very much so in your own right, it was great to have you as a part of the process. And it has to feel good too. Yeah. working with a contractor hand in hand and something that's going to be called your own and really create something like this. So it was definitely a lot of fun. Why don't we walk through the waterfalls? So we've got this really beautiful upper pool, which is the wetland filter. That's those 24 small aqua blocks under there, snorkel and a one and a half centipede all in here. You don't even know any of those components are here. Right. You don't see any of the man-made products. That's always the end result. But right in front of us is probably one of the most unique things on the project. Yeah, hand down. It's literally a huge root ball of a tree that grew around this awesome dome. It was sourced from the same place all the other stones were. And the guy that we got the rock from, he said, hey, I got this really cool stump I want you to see. And he showed us. And Ed and I were both like, yeah, we definitely have to include that in the project. This is one of those one of a kind pieces that you don't see them often. No. And I feel like it, it really brings interest to this area. Obviously, it looks cool already, but having this huge branches like that, for me at least, I think that's one of the things that really sets this apart from other stuff that I've seen, not only from Aquascape, but just pond builders in yeah, general, yeah, you know? Yeah. I think what's, what's also cool, and the fact that Mother Nature just wrapped itself around this rock and held onto it, when the stump came out, yeah. it came with it. But what else I think is cool is if you took a snapshot of all of the stuff going on, like literally, if you wrapped like a five by five inch frame around this, this would look like exactly what's in some of your scapes down in your basement, yeah, in your studio. Exactly. That's honestly a lot of times when I make the projects, that's what I'm thinking about. If you were to just take a picture, like if you were to get an aquarium, just throw it out there and whatever ended up in it, that's how it would look. So, so. awesome. All the lichens, the moss, mm -hmm. and this is a motif that carries all the way through the project. Yeah. We have a like kind of a variety of waterfalls, which you're never going to see the same staircase or same style waterfalls, one after the other after the other. We've got a split waterfalls here, but we've got moss, you know, kind of lining the edges. Yeah. Very, very different sounds all the way throughout. We're using the high points of rocks to funnel the water back down and choking it down through the low point and creating these very, very natural looking waterfalls. It's not always as easy, but it can be just as simple as using one rock rather than a frame rock, frame rock, and a spill stone. We're actually using one rock to create these waterfalls. It's so awesome. Now that we've worked our way down through the river part of the system, we're standing on one of those, what we call destination boulders. You've heard us talk about them in videos before, but this is an enormous slab of stone. Mm -hmm. And it's just so inviting because of the way it's set, it's flat. Yeah. You and I can comfortably stand here and have yeah. not so awkward conversation, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? But it's having these big slabs of stone all throughout the mm -hmm. edge of the pond, really inviting people to interact with this thing. Right. Right. That was whenever I spoke with Ed, that was one of the features that I really wanted to incorporate in this pond. I said, because I knew I was going to build this flagstone patio over here, which isn't complete, but it, it will be at some point. So that you can just kind of walk out onto that, onto these rocks, and it all just, it makes it more intimate. Yes. It, and it totally he does and what I think is going to be cool is at some point when Tanner actually finds the time to do this in his busy schedule <laughs> is creating you know as we worked our way down we really changed elevations right yeah. and we were literally 15 feet behind you guys the viewers and we worked ourselves down about five feet in elevation because everything slopes this way but creating those elevation changes really creates a lot more interactivity yeah. in the garden space so at some point we're gonna have a raised deck over there where you can see the sill plate of what one used to be and then one out of their master and then down here will be a lower patio so every Everything kind of funnels down to this yeah, incredible go. patio space. And then what's really cool is when we get over here, it's when you're standing and congregating on this space, you have that as the like the nice thing. Oh my god, it's and gorgeous. It
it also kind of ties into that more of an intimate type of environment you know more chill you're sitting back here just a more gentle sound and then if you want it really in your face you go up there yeah <laughs> and which is the plan an upper patio right a yeah. little cozy kind of thing where maybe you build a little bonfire pit but having a pathway going up there i mean it's just it's so cool to have all the levels and all yeah. the different spaces Tanner, i know you're busy just thank you so much again for giving us the opportunity to come out and obviously create a one-of-a-kind masterpiece in your backyard but nobody's truly more deserving than you and obviously your beautiful wife and but just thank you so much i really appreciate it really man. appreciate it's great dude. guys if you enjoyed this video please let us know in the comment section below if you haven't already go to his channel where can they find you surfer design on youtube on instagram i'm on other socials but i'm not very active youtube and instagram if you want to see what i'm up to hit this guy up he is amazing thanks again for watching we'll check you guys later you it was gonna be a crazy week i'm still here at my house every morning i like to do a little bit of prep work for that pond tour that's coming i've got two more weeks three more weeks i don't remember but a couple weeks left to get everything spruced up can't wait to show off my backyard don't forget that september 23rd 24th weekend you can get the tickets in the link below those of you that are out of town make the trip out here next week is gonna be awesome don't forget to check out also in the link below that live koi feed brad did an amazing job back there it's gonna be super cool i'm thinking screensaver i'm thinking winter how cool is it gonna be to check out those fish in the winter i'm thinking now how cool is it just some awesome stuff there next week you guys you can't miss next week we got well i keep saying we're gonna finish that naperville project and because i say we're gonna keep finishing it odds are we won't but some amazing stuff is happening next week i know chris is actually gonna be out helping us on that the chris hansen speaking of chris chris is also out maintenance and i think he's gonna show you guys step by step on how to fix a clogged basin and why it's so important to maintain those palmless waterfalls, those infinity edges, those intake bays. So make sure you guys check out next week where Chris is going over that in detail and why it's so, so, so important. What else do we have? Oh my gosh, how could I possibly forget? How many of you guys have been dying to see what the green roof at Aquascape looks like? Well, Trevor's taking you up there with a big team. They're up there maintaining the green roof at Aquascape. So you get a sneak peek of what the green roof at Aquascape looks like and the maintenance that goes in. It. So you guys, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. And we'll see you next week right around this time. Bye.